Listen, everybody, to the words I have to say. Better get ready. This is Daniel White the third with the Second Coming Watch update. This is update number 544. Let's take a quick look at today's prophecy-related headlines, which point towards the Second Coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and the end of the world as we know it. First today, under the sign category of distress among nations, according to USA Today, explosions rattled across Egypt on Friday, and security forces arrested more than 100 people amid protests calling for an Islamic uprising. Authorities remained on high alert as demonstrators responded to calls by Islamist groups. The Salafist Front and the Muslim Brotherhood to take to the streets to defend their religion and denounce Egyptian leaders. The protests are part of a broader push by conservative and sometimes violent voices rising against military rulers who are trying to blunt Islamic extremist growth in the country. Six people were killed in the violence. Second today, under the sign category of increased violence, according to agency France Press, the AFP, at least 120 people were killed and 270 others wounded on Friday when two suicide bombers blew themselves up and gunmen opened fire during weekly prayers at the mosque of one of Nigeria's top Islamic leaders. The attack at the Grand Mosque in Kano, the biggest city in the mainly Muslim north of the country, came just as Friday prayers had started. The mosque is attached to the palace of the Emir of Kano, Nigeria's second most senior Muslim cleric, who last week urged civilians to take up arms against Boko Haram. Third today, under the sign category of the turmoil in Israel and the Middle East, According to the Times of Israel, Major General Gadi Eisenkot, who was named on Friday as the next Israel Defense Forces Chief of the General Staff, firmly opposes Israeli military intervention to thwart Iran's nuclear program. Unless Iran poses an immediate existential threat to Israel. Eisenkot holds to the view that Israel should not strike at Iran unless the sword is at our throat, a phrase first used in the Iranian context almost four years ago by Israel's former spy chief a television report said Prime Minister Netanyahu delayed naming Eisenkot as the new chief of general staff for the past two weeks, in part because he considered finding a candidate with a stricter outlook on Iran. Fourth today under the sign category of increased natural disasters, according to Newsweek, a volcano named Mount Aso has erupted in Japan, spewing ash and lava and canceling dozens of flights in the region. This volcano, one of the world's largest, last blew its top 22 years ago. There has been increased seismic activity in the region since August, although it wasn't clear when or even if it would erupt. 
the ash has reached an elevation of 3,280 feet and could cause continuing air delays. Fifth today under the sign category of the turmoil in Israel and the Middle East. According to the Jerusalem Post, the Israeli military's chief rabbi, Rafi Peretz, was recorded speaking strongly against uh, members of the Muslim faith who pray at the Temple Mount. In a transcript of a religious lecture, Peretz is quoted as saying that the Temple Mount is of no significance to the Muslim faith and that Jerusalem is not mentioned in the Quran. The recording was aired amid ongoing Jewish Muslim tensions in Jerusalem over who is allowed to pray at the site. The rabbi later released a statement apologizing if his words offended the Arab population. Beloved, you can read these stories in more detail and get more prophecy-related news at secondcomingherald.com. The prophetic passage of Scripture we are looking at today is Genesis chapter 40, verses 18 and 19, which reads, And Joseph answered and said, This is the interpretation thereof. The three baskets are three days. Yet within three days shall Pharaoh lift up thy head from off thee, and shall hang thee on a tree, and the birds shall eat thy flesh from off thee. Allow me to share with you some commentary on this passage from the popular Bible prophecy commentary edited by Dr. Tim LaHaye and Dr. Ed Heinsen. While Joseph is in prison, two fellow prisoners approach him and ask him to interpret their recent dreams. After the first man, Pharaoh's former cupbearer, relays the details of his dream, Joseph interprets it as predicting the cupbearer's restoration uh, to royal favor in three days' time. Indeed, the cupbearer is later restored to his former position. When the second man, Pharaoh's former chief baker, relays the details of his dream, Joseph interprets it as predicting the baker's execution in three days' time, as Joseph predicted the baker is later executed. If the Lord tarries his coming, ladies and gentlemen, and we live, we will continue looking at the prophetic passages of the Bible in our next broadcast slash podcast. Our second coming quote for today is from Thomas V. Moore. He said, Christ is coming to the earth in such a form at least as shall fulfill his purposes of mercy to his friends and justice to his foes. And dear friend, if you're not ready for the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, may I encourage you to get ready today by receiving him as your personal Savior. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Simply believe in your heart in the Lord Jesus Christ, that he died for your sins, was buried, and rose from the dead by the power of God for you, so that you can live forever with him. Pray and ask him to come into your heart to save your soul today, and he will do so. Romans 10.13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So keep looking up, dear friend, for your redemption draweth nigh. Let us join in the prayer of John the Revelator when he prayed, even so come, Lord Jesus. God bless you.